Tour top eight are going to be. And there we have on the left, it's Ilias Karamanis. Oldham Grandfather of Eternity is the hero. He's going to be repping, of course, Ian Zhang on the right-hand side. We have another one of those talented Dromai players who has believed in this deck for an extended period of time. Ian, very ready to go, very experienced, and I'm sure knows what he's doing in the Oldham matchup. Yeah, honestly, Ian, quite famous for playing Illusionist, was a big Prism player sort of back in the day. I believe a calling top eight, perhaps at the first Pro Tour, if I recall correctly. Maybe yes. even a calling win. Is he the person who retired Prism, now that I think about it? He is not the person who retired Prism, but I know he does have some at least Tier 3 event high finishes okay. or Tier okay. 4 event top 8s. Um, Ian Zhang is a great player. We did get to see Ilias already on stream, and Ilias executed that match against Matt Fox, in my opinion, expertly, so a great old him player. It's going to be quite the match. I'm interested to try to figure out what version of Ian's of Dramai Ian is on as we sort of progress into this. We do see the... Um, the equipment suite for him there with the sort of anti old him tech in the form of the is it ghostly touch is that yeah the name? ghostly touch uh, you know sort of a a little bit chuckled at legendary I think but oh, it, so it has good. its role like it has a one very defined role but it's great in that role for sure and it's for this matchup yeah it's pretty interesting when you see the ghostly touch end game usually there's a pitch stack with the Kermai, um and potentially the passing mirage to sort of set up that that phantasm takeaway or whatever you may call it. Um, which is, it's a very interesting end game to watch out of the Jermai player here. I, I think that Burn Them All will also be quite integral to Ian's plane. Now we see Uvia, and Uvia is, I don't think Uvia would have made it in tomorrow's list, so this might be a little bit different. Yeah, it's interesting. This is still very much a red line drill, my list for the most part. Only 10 blues in the entire list, a couple, uh, five yellows, and then the rest are red. So we are very much leaning in that sort of harder, aggressiver direction, but at the same time, these draw my lists are very flexible. You know, we, we see unmovables in this deck. Like, that's not the sign of an aggressive deck to me. That's a sign of a deck that has multiple game plans. And I think we'll see that multiple game plan nature of Dromai very much on display mm -hmm. here against Oldham. Yeah, very important to sort of keep track of Ilias's poppers. There are going to be a lot of them, don't get me wrong. But as we progress into the super late game, there will become an economy with them. Yeah, and can, uh, can Ian find ways to go ahead and pressure without worrying about poppers are there enough non-phantasm attacks in the deck where you don't just get to beat out by an oldham it's always a concern for these dromai players yep so Ilias on ab2 as well important to keep track of Ilias's tunic here we did see a perfect execution of the tunic in the previous match with him where every single time tunic was on the three counter it would be two card for eight that would be utilizing the one resource off of Fjendal Spring Tunic, pitching a blue card and playing a four-cost card that does eight damage. Just sort of a bread-and-butter attack sequence out of Oldham Grandfather of Eternity. Yep, classic Oldham stuff. Here we see a Yender Eye being made by Ian Zhang. A little bit of resiliency on his side. It's like that beautiful, uh, that's that promo Sigil of Solace that we see out there in the, uh, in the bin right now. Or is that the, the Fate for Scene? That's the Fate for Scene. Yeah. So. yeah, those ones are pretty hard to get, <laughs> right. to be honest. Right. Yeah, but Ian, I don't know if I've mentioned, plays out of Amsterdam, a very prolific player out of there. Had the pleasure of meeting him at multiple Pro Tours now, and has just always performed super well. So, interested to see his transition from Prism over to Jermai here. Yeah, you know, Illusionist, going to do Illusionist things. They love that sort of arena presence game that they get to play. It, it's very much, I would say it's addictive. I think once you've lived a little bit of the Illusionist life, it's hard to get away from and play good, classic, fair, flesh and blood. You really want those permanent threats out there in the arena. Yeah, permanents are pretty rare in Flesh and Blood, so it is, it is, it is a, definitely a fun deck to play. Um, and, you know, Jermai not quite doing what Prism was, but does have their own game plan with the Dragons here um, and the, the aggressive red attacks um, that kind of distinguishes the game, its game plan from its illusionist predecessor. Taking a look over Ilias's Oldham list here, certainly not a pure fatigue list, very much floating towards the middle. There's enough attack here. We have Spinal Crushes. We have Endless Winters. We have all the big pulverizes, a full suite, three pulverizes. So expect a little bit of aggression out of Elias. I don't think he's the type of player to sit back, just take it on the chin over and over. I think we will see some big attacks uh, once he settles into the game and finds his windows here. Yep, and we see Ian in a very comfortable board state with these at. Um, these little dragons are going to be pinging in for one. Aether Ashwings. Love those little dragons. You don't feel like you really lost out on all that much when you're going ahead and making those small attacks. Even when they get popped, sure, your turn ends, but you're able to continue to go out there and generate presence in the arena with your large dragon. Yeah. Sarakai out there now at this point, also joining the 
dumpster of dragons. Is it a good value exchange for old him to be blocking these sort of one attack dragons? Or are you trying to save your six plus attacks for the bigger ones when possible? Because I know Ian is going to prevent th those dragons from having phantasm as much as possible or sequence in a way. But when that when you do block with a six attack finally on a big dragon, you've lost so much value and taken so much damage from the, the smaller dragons that it kind of feels like you lose that exchange. Yeah, I mean, it, it all depends on, like, the value per card that you're getting. If you are concerned, like, oh, can this Dromai actually fatigue me? Which, by the way, is a plan that Dromais often execute against Oldhams. They seek to be the fatigue deck, and it, it's hard. It's a long, grindy road, but I have seen them be successful at it. It's kind of just like sort of a Kadachi fatigue-type plan where you just get wider and wider with those Ash Wings, and eventually you get to the point where you are just demanding answers. It, it's something that comes up occasionally mm. it's not outside the realm of possibility wow how do you how do you sort of work against this if you're ilios we have had two rake the embers sort of back to back we have seven aether ash wings on the battlefield i mean you talk about kadashi lock but i've never seen a ninja with seven kadashis is, is it fair to say that rake the embers possibly the best card in this matchup i think so um i mean you could argue maybe it's like in the end game the ghostly touch sort of otk ish kind of thing but I mean, when you draw them back to back like this, looks pretty good. Yeah, and what this is going to mean is that Ilias is going to have to use those poppers to just go ahead and blunt the turn. You want to stop Ian Zhang from continuing to get wide and wide and wide. And, you know, it does feel a little inefficient when you commit those poppers mm -hmm. to just these small threats. But I think it's going to be critical. Otherwise, Ilias is just going to find himself run over eventually. And there we see a popper. Ghostly Touch being ticked up, and, you know, Ian's pretty happy to play this game right now. Brian, I think that if Ian, Ian Zhang draws Kromai pretty pretty soon, I think it's really bad for Ilias, because what Ilias is doing right now is he's blocking the first Aether Ashwing with a six attack in order to stop the next six or seven from coming in. If a Kromai gets put on the battlefield, it will not have that simple exchange of just shutting down the turn like that. I think that's kind of the number one card that Ian potentially wants to draw right now. We see a Kyloria going to the battlefield. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, Brendan. Kyloria is certainly high on the threat scale, but it's not really about the individual threat per dragon. It's just making as many threats as possible. Here we see a nice Phantasm attack in Sweeping Blow, just going to come in, continue to generate Ash. Ian, absolutely Ash Rich at this moment. Yeah, and I think that Ash Rich is a good way to describe to describe this Dramai deck right now, but I think another way to describe the Ultim deck and why it has trouble sometimes in this matchup is because it's an action point poor deck. And it, it is not able to actually clear multiple Aether Ash Rings on a turn most often. You know, there is Rousey Ancients, but this is like, you look, you think back to Prism, which actually stopped, you know, if you had Gogan or not because of the way Spectre worked. Dromai basically does that against decks like Oldham, and, you know, this, these sort of dragons function kind of as Spectra because Oldham just never has Gogan, right? The entire turn is sunk into just clearing a dragon. Yeah, it is the core weakness of the Guardian class. This is what they struggle with. They struggle with decks that punish you for not having enough action points. And you see Ilyush's plan is just hammer, 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 slow and steady, mm -hmm. have to kind of grind away, and Ian just content to accumulate counters on that ghostly touch, playing towards a very specific endgame. Straight up, Brendan, you do not get to this point in the Pro Tour unless you know how to navigate this matchup. Ian has a plan right now. Yeah. First few times you play this matchup as a Dromai, it can feel a little hopeless, quite frankly. You're like, how do I ever get through this brick wall? Ian knows the answer, I promise you. Honestly, a lot of matchups feel pretty hopeless the first time you play Dromai. It is a very technical deck. Um, Brian, does Ian have Toma Fiendal in his list? Let's take a look at Ian's list. I'll do a quick search for Toma Fiendal. I believe the answer to that is no, but we will confirm. Oh, there are two copies of Tome. In okay, just wondering, yeah. based off the Mage Master yeah, boot sure. tech that Makes we've sense. gone with here, um, can also be used for you know some other things. But mo most, I think, most popular, I've seen this card associated with that Tome of Fiendal, just to have that big turn where you gain a lot of life, keep your action point, um, or and just it's it's kind of a big pivot turn for these Dramai decks sometimes, but actually not core to the game plan. Yep, very well put. Feels good, maybe not necessary as long as you're doing. Basically what Ian is doing now, continuing to put dragons out there. So you protect your own life total, build up that ghostly touch, slow and steady, mm. play rake the embers, which you're very, very happy to do. And there's now even more ash wings. So Ilias just can never afford not to pop. He does not have the option because it'll just leak so much damage. Yeah, and this is this is like textbook how you fatigue another deck as Jermai. Like Ilias, I know it looks good when he trades a card, pops one of these, and then Ian can't swing anymore. But he's wasting an entire card to do that. Ian's, Ian's Aether Ash Wings are semi-permanent. Yep. And so they're functioning like 
on the board turn by turn, and this advantage just kind of keeps snowballing in Ian's favor. I think that is the third rake, the Embers, though. It is. Um, so important to keep that in mind. We've kind of seen them draw quite early in this game, and that's why Ian seems so firmly in control. Isn't that fine, though? Like, don't you oh, don't yeah. really care when you oh, draw yeah. them, and I think better is... I did see Ian pitch Remembrance as well. Yep. Yep, does have three copies of Remembrance. I expect they are probably all in the deck for this matchup. Ash continue to accumulate on Ian's side. So, Bri so Brian, what is Ilios's game plan? Are we just going to keep popping, keep clearing with Titan's Fist? Is yep. that good enough? Because, like, it feels a bit passive in the matchup. Like, maybe, yeah. Okay, we've ran Ian out of three rake the embers. You know, he's going to slow down a bit. But... Is this strategy by Ilias, is it ultimately winning, or is it just putting the ball really in Ian's court to just take this game away, has full control, etc.? It does put the ball in Ian's court, but you do not have another choice. You simply mm -hmm. have to play in this matter. The best Oldhams will be the most patient Oldhams, and Ilias showing extreme patience right now has to hope for a moment when Ian just runs out of things to do. He can't continue to do this forever, and Ilias just has to keep committing those poppers and find those windows, find those key spots where an attack is disruptive enough. And if you're on Ian, or excuse me, if you're on Ilyash's side, there are attacks that matter in this matchup. You know, I mentioned Ilyash playing a list with something like Spinal Crush. That's a big deal. Like, that's an attack that can actually go ahead and have some influence over your opponent's turn. You can't settle for raw damage, though. You do have to make sure that everything you play offensively is designed to somehow trouble your opponent. Yeah, absolutely. We do see a uh, mirror guy dropped here for Ian, um, taking Phantasm off that first attack so maybe leaking some damage now as we sort of progress in this board state i'm interested to see what is the high priority target for Ilias here with the hammer it does look like it is the mirror guy yeah it makes sense just want to go ahead and keep that arena as clean as possible and just want to make clear by the way ian also has burned them all in his deck i believe yeah so that's gonna even though Ilias has come to the party with the correct amount of ab um it is going to tax uh Ilias's hand while because Ian will be both attacking with dragons and cards from hand and triggering burn them all. So um, even though the AB has been brought in the matchup, it's still a very significant card against his ultimate deck. Annoying. Annoying card is burn them all. Just demands more resources of you. It shows sort of the multifaceted nature of these Dromai decks, how much they are really capable of, how many different ways they can go ahead and challenge you as you play these games. Brennan, I want to talk Remembrance targets if you're an ENC. What are you really looking to recycle? What are the best things to go ahead and put back into your deck if you're on Ian's side? How do you guarantee you get the most out of these Remembrances? Three cop but oh, I feel like this is one of those answers that I give, and, and then Mara Ferris is going to come be angry at me. That's for okay. After. None of us are expected <laughs> to be as smart as Mara, so, so give your best guess. I look at the context of the game so far. It does seem like one of the most impactful cards Ian has played, and that is fatiguing Elias of Fastest is going to be the Rake the Embers. So I feel like that would be an initial target. I mean, three in the deck, it feels like, what do you, I'm, I'm more asking you, what do you think the first target is? But I'd also, I would also ask you, what do you think the secondary target is? Yeah, I, I agree with you on the first target. I think it's Rake the Embers. I can't wait for Mario to tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, but after that, I don't know, man. I, it just seems like so much of the load is like, get as wide as possible. Continue to use that across multiple turns so Ilias can't go on the offensive. Preserve your life total. Do exactly what Ian's doing right now. And then at some point, this is going to transition to that burn them all endgame as well, and you hope you've just run through all the poppers at that point, because there is a finite amount. I know it feels like infinite, but Ian's goal is to eventually work his way through all of them, and I think he is capable of doing that. Yeah, honestly, I don't think I've seen a Jermai deck with that many remembrances, and as I look at this board state progress, I think like it feels very hard for me to see a way where Elias is not about is not running into a game plan that is just grim for him, because most importantly, I think is like. Okay, he's clearing some Aether Ash Wings. There's more dragons on the board. That's not great. Um, you know, but that ghostly touch is already at seven. So it, I feel like it's not going to be long before Ian has something above 10 or even above 20 attack, and it's just going to be able to swing in, you know, put something before this. It takes away the Phantasm, and Elias is dealing with some serious damage. But who knows if damage even matters, because I think Elias' deck is getting thin so fast. 45 poppers is my quick count in Elias' deck. And that seems like just way too many to ever push through. And uh, it kind of is. But if your goal is not to necessarily push through every single one, but go ahead and get that passing Mirage down, have a ghostly touch that's on 19, 20 counters, that will get the job done. Yeah, absolutely. We 
do know seven of those have been used thus Speaking far. of, there is the first passing mirage. Yeah, nice little piece to have out there in the arena. Okay, Rousey Ancients, as we talked about, old him not having go again. This is one of the cards that does. So it's actually a pretty critical turn for Ilias here, yeah, being able to clear dragons. two dragons. Um, he's actually going to hit the passing mirage as well, sure. I believe. Good idea. Yep, makes sense. So, yep, clearing both of those both of those dragons. And, th I mean, that's kind of like one of the swingiest turns possible for Ilias, I think, in this matchup, is finding that Rouse. It's so funny, though, because you have to ask yourself, well, what did Ilyash accomplish on wow. that turn? And it, it, it's just not all that much, quite frankly. Yeah, these Uvias feel pretty powerful, too, as Ian is so much ash on his side of the board. Extremely ash-rich Uvias get to do their thing, this, further complicate. This deck really feels like, the more I'm watching this, it really feels like this deck was brought to beat Oldham. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that's fair. I mean, I, th I think a lot of... What these Dromais have done is sort of tailored themselves to these metagames. And, you know, I, I watched Mara play. I, I felt like Mara also had good plans into Lexi, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. So I sort of naysayed Dromai going into this tournament. I'm not one of those people who thinks Dromai is unplayable. I, I think there is a very, very real Dromai deck, a very real threat of Dromai winning every tournament. I do think it struggles with conversion. I think in part that's because it's a very appealing deck. A lot of people love playing these dragons. Uh, some of them are on the lower end of the skill. Spectrum, other, end, other ones such as Ian, such as Mara, absolute top of the skill spectrum, very capable of winning any tournament they enter, and you see exactly what happens when Dromai gets in the hands of dangerous players. Yep, I, I honestly, I can't doubt Illusionist anymore. I mean, back at the first Vegas calling here in the United States, I actually said that Prism was unplayable in that format and ended up winning the tournament. I mean, Illusionist defies the data, no matter how grim it might look. Yeah, Prism uh, is living legend. I don't know if you know that, Brennan. So apparently it won a fair share of tournaments. You know what else is living legend that showed up to the tournament, Brian? Hmm. Chain. <laughs> hmm. That is true. That is true. <laughs> There's our first Kermai um, of sort of of the match. I think this is pretty key for Ian. It makes it tough for Ilias to just be able to, you know, throw down the one popper and stop the entire turn. Yeah, it's nice to get a little bit wider here. And, you know, demanding two poppers can matter in certain scenarios. Maybe you start demanding three poppers when you start working towards passing Mirage. and. Yeah, I honestly think that demanding two versus one is pretty huge because, I mean, Ilias' deck, we talked about 45, but with these sort of semi-permanent dragons on the board, those are going to go by quick, I think. That's a fair statement. Just getting to town again is Ian with these Ether Ashwings. Slowly, Ilias' life total trickles down. Mm, Ilias just having a look at the absolute monster of a board state in front of him. Yeah, this is an intimidating position to be in. Facing down an army, a dumpster, if you will, of dragons. I don't know if you knew that, Brendan. That is what you call multi dragon mm. dump. Is that the scientific term? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I studied dragonology in college. And it looks like Elias is going to say, send me the bill them. for the first time. Yeah, willing yeah. to let those ash, either willing. Or unable to stop those Ash Wings for getting Do you think through. the Chromine facilitated this sort of change in game plan from Ilias where he doesn't have the sort of easy way to pop and just stop the turn? We'll have to commit two six blocks to achieve the same effect. It is now going to be allow the Aether Ash Wings to hit and now focus on popping what I would consider to be real dragons, I guess you could call them, the bigger dragons, things like the Ender Eye. Um, so I think it's kind of changed the entire dynamic, just this one Chromai. I think we'll see it cleared pretty quickly here, potentially by Ilias, but feels like a powerful card in the matchup. Yeah, that seems like it should be the target on this turn. I do see a Rouse in hand for mm. Ilias. I don't know if we have the necessary I also companions. see a Terra Sunder, so... Yep. Terra Sunder will be the pitch. Looks like he does find the card, maybe off of Crown of Seeds there. So two new Crown of Seeds, maybe a lot, uh, facilitating this Rousey Ancient's turn. Rousey Ancient seems critical with both a Miragai and a Chromai oh, on absolutely. the battlefield. And a passing Mirage. I mean, Honestly, I could go on and on about everything that's <laughs> it's bad on the on the other side of the board for Ilias here. Yeah, crowded arena for, for Ian Zhang, and Ilias has to do a lot of work to get this cleaned up. It is going to be that Titan's Fist heading after yet another dragon, so Passing Mirage gets another turn out there. 
That's the problem. When there's all these threats, you have to pick and choose. And if you make the wrong decision on a given turn, you could get hard punished for it. Ooh, and there's our first burn them all of the game. I mean, I can't get the idea of three remembrances out of my mind. It's just looming there to there's sort of occur so these threats. so many remembrances. Yeah. There's so many. As I see us not having cast one, still on the first cycle of the deck, and putting this much pressure on Elias, milling this many cards from Elias, it seems like... Yeah, there's a lot of recursion out of Ian's deck here. Well, here's the harder part about it, Brendan, when, when you think about it. We can sit here. We have the benefit of looking through players' deck lists. We know Ian has available to him those three Remembrance. Ilias doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, the way you play this matchup, if you think your opponent has one Remembrance versus the way you play it if you think your opponent has three Remembrances, is very, very different. Has Ilias co correctly identified what Ian is trying to do here? Does he know the type of quote-unquote clock he's actually on right now? Yeah, you know, I'm really having a retrospective moment, Brian, about maybe doubting the Dromai deck, because just looking at this deck, it's attacking from so many different angles. Does It has semi-persistent a semi persistent board state that is requiring Ilias to commit cards and mill. It has a sort of OTK endgame piece of armor that's sitting on the battlefield, just looming, stacking up. It has arcane damage, not only through Asvalai, but also through a burn them all, which is some sort of pseudo endgame hand pressure uh, sort of tool. I mean... This deck seems ridiculous. Here's a pretty sizable threat coming out for the first time. It's Tomultai. It's one of the big dragons. It feels like maybe the first big dragon we've seen today. Uh, and this is going to be a very, very threatening card for Ilyash. Of course, that is backed up by that passing Mirage. And that means we're going to go ahead and get in with Tomultai. How about we reveal those top two cards, see what we're working with. Yeah, Tomaltai is sort of a must answer as a 5-5 five, five here. and oof, Oh, two red cards, and that is it for Crown of Seeds, and that's a big swing in this matchup for Ian Zhang. I mean, Tomaltai is like one of the, the scariest dragons you can see. As Wizard, as well, facing against this, Tomaltai drops, and you just audibly groan and hope it doesn't hit the top two cards of the deck. Crown of the Seeds being a similar loss, like... It's going to be tough for Ilias because he was using that Crown of Seeds quite frequently to just get that one block against the Aether Ashwing, cycle away his arsenal, maybe find the targets for the Rouse of Ancients. All of that agency has now been lost. Right, if you're Ilias, you really have to clean up, clean up this Tomaltai here. I hope he's got a nut sizable enough attack because obviously yeah. the Titan's Fist won't do it. It is going to be Command and Conquer coming down quickly, answering that Tomaltai. A huge sigh of relief if you're an Ilias fan because that was going to be a complete nightmare. Great tempo for Ian Zhang, though, because Elias' previous play patterns was to just pitch a single card and swing Titan's Fist, and that demanded two cards, and to actually attack with a card and thus mill another card from Ilias' deck. So, Tomaltai, just a tough, really tough card to deal with. Ilias does, but ultimately, you know, the value exchange does seem to be a bit in Ian's favor, especially considering the board state. Yeah, and looks like we're going to have another Chromai come down. We saw what a problem this card created previously. Just a great way to lead off the turn. Brian, I want to ask you if you want to take the over or under if Ian might end this game with higher life total than he started I with. don't see how he takes damage thus far. Like, where does Elias find a window to go ahead and turn back into this? I think those early Rake the Embers have set up Ian to just go ahead and pressure him from the absolute jump. Let's, like, let's zoom out, right? Elias has committed to controlling the board, right? Elias is un very unlikely with Ian Zhang on 43 to just randomly pivot and start attacking unless he's like, okay, there's no way I can win. You know, he sees all the remembrances. He's like, there's no way I can win. And maybe he starts going aggro. Other than that, the game plan since literally turn one has been, let's clear the board. Let's, let's try to stay in control. And as a result, I think you're right. Like, I don't see how Ian takes any damage in this game unless he loses. Yeah, these, these Ash Wings going ahead and getting some work done, slowly bringing down Elias' life total. Slow and steady. That is the nature of Dromai in this matchup. Burn them all, continuing to tick up. Doing its job, though, very effectively. At just asking for more answers from Ian. It's annoying. It's annoying to play against Burn Them All. Yeah, so what Burn Them All is, is doing as well is taking cards out of out of Ilias's hand to give Ilias less cards to actually block or pop Aether Ash Wings with, which means is once we finally get back to Ilias's turn, it gives it makes it so Ilias has a a, a lower chance of actually having a card to pitch the Titan's Fist. All of this is just taxing Ilios's hand, right? And the more we tax Ilios's hand, the more damage Ilios's links uh, leaks, and the less chance Ilios has of having an additional card in hand to actually swing that Titan's Fist. I mean, this is this is the classic flesh and blood concept of creating windows. It just yep. happens naturally in your mind. Yep. You know what else it's doing too? It, it just isn't giving any window for Ilios to go ahead and pressure Ian's hand. And what that means is Ian very comfortably pitches three red cards here. And just drops to, or excuse me, uh, red card plus two red cards plus a blue. 
and is able to just go ahead and drop Dominia. And now we have another one of those huge, huge threats out there ready to wreak havoc on Elias's hand. Yeah, I mean, this is also another must-answer dragon, only for, like, further sort of turning that clock on Ilias's deck. Misspoke there. It was a yellow and two reds. Remembrance, one of the cards pitched. So Ilias should be tracking that nose of that remembrance. I think we saw the other mm -hmm. remembrance the pitched beginning. earlier in the game. So Ilias knows right now I'm facing at least a two remembrance deck and maybe starting to sweat. Is there a third one waiting for me as well? Yeah, I remember the fate for scene was pitched as well, so I wonder if that was actually the second cycle, but it does feel a bit early. Yeah, not sure on that one. I mean, the card economy has been good for Ian. It is like basically three cards pitched for, per turn, it feels like, or a dragon played. So we are moving pretty quickly, but... Three Remembrances might be overkill, but I wonder if you, if you have them in the deck, you're probably playing them in the old in matchup, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I can't imagine there's another matchup where you're like, I need three remembrances. Like, the mirror. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe like Azuri is another one where you consider mm -hmm. it, but it sure seems like if you're committed to this plan, you're bringing them in here. Picking up an action point is the Stromai off this Chromai attack. Yep, giving Ilias a tough decision. Do you want to commit two six plus blocks to actually try to stop this turn? Looks like a. Potential shield block? No, a staunch response here. Yeah, and this just doesn't feel good if you're an Ilias fan. You don't feel like you're, you're doing anything. You're treading water infinitely. Yeah, Brian. So Ilias needs to kill the, um, the Dominia, of course, right? But he also has to block some of this damage and not get absolutely destroy this turn. But then he also has to block the Arcane from yep. burning them all. Like, there's just so much being asked of Ilias' hand and the economy of those four cards. Because there is no crown of seeds as well, it's really tough to deal with, but we got to get Dominion off the board. And then, obviously, Chromai is sort of the, the second target there as well. Yep. Is going to go ahead and deploy Endless Winter as a popper. Ghostly Touch up to 12. Let's not lose track of that extremely dangerous looming threat that is sitting out there in the arena. Oh, man. Another trigger here. Snags the Rousey Ancients. Absolute nightmare for Elias. We see an Evoke Kyloria off the back of that as well. Just relentless pressure from Ian Zhang here. Sigil being Jeez. pitched in this, this is, case. This is a very special type of deck with the amount of things that uh, Ian has to keep track of with the triggers, the amount of tokens that are on the battlefield. I can understand why it's appealing. Yeah, Remembrance it's pitched? Yeah, that might be our third one. And I believe that's a Vincera Kai now stretching... Almost play? out of our window. Yeah, and there Elias it is. is just going to yeah, send the fist. No, and no. I get it, man. What were you supposed to do in that scenario? And good Lord, was that maybe the most dominant game of Flesh and Blood?